It's been three years since I've played basketball, and to say that at the age of 25 just doesn't make sense to me. Something that was such a big part of my life just taken away from me. I had to stop for a reason that I just couldn't control. It just wasn't fair. It changed my life completely. Basketball was my everything. Literally everything I did revolved around basketball. I'd wake up early so I could go and work out, get my body in shape so I could be better at basketball. Instead of hanging out with friends at lunchtime, I would go into the gym, put up shots to improve my game. Then I'd have training later on in the day and then games on the weekend. Loving the game so much, it became my goal to play professionally. Then I could play for a living doing what I love. And I was well on the way to meeting that goal. After high school, I moved to the US to attend college where I was playing at one of the best NCAA Division II programs in the country. And I thought I was training a lot before I got there, but the Americans, they just do it differently. There was team practice every single day and there was lifting and all this other extra stuff that was involved. I felt like I needed to catch up, so I was spending extra hours in the gym, putting up shots, practicing my ball handling, just anything I could do to get ahead. And that experience at college was just incredible. I had the most fun that I'd ever had playing basketball because I was just training even harder than I ever did, and it was just getting more and more fun. I was only recruited into the junior varsity team, so I had to prove myself that I was worthy to play with the best at the college. And they were some serious basketball players. I'd never seen players so tall, athletic, and skilled in my life. But sure enough, after a couple of months, I made it. I made it into the team. Even though I wasn't playing many minutes, I was learning so much by playing with such caliber players that I'd never really had the chance to do before. Back then, I was playing with guys who are now playing professionally. It was really just such a great opportunity for growth. So my freshman year came to an end and sophomore year was just starting and I was still riding that high. I was still loving everything about it. I was still improving so much and I just felt like there was even more to learn. But sophomore year was the year that things started to turn bad for me. I don't know what it was. I was still training as hard as I could. I was putting in the effort, but the results were just not showing. I felt like I couldn't compete as well at practice. I was just slower than I normally was. It just seemed like no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't get anything to work for me. And I was just starting to panic because I had no idea why I'd been putting in the same amount of effort that I always had and I just couldn't get any results. I remember the first practice we had after a week off over the Christmas break. It was without a doubt the toughest session that I'd ever been a part of. That session was probably the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. And sure, having sessions like that are a part of basketball and the coach needed to make sure that we're fit for the rest of the season coming up. But something was not right. I was struggling more than I should have been. I could see my teammates keep carrying on, but I was just completely spent. And for the first time ever, I had to sit myself out of practice. I just went and sat against the wall and just had my head, my hands in my head, and just, I just felt so crap. And that was a really big deal for me because I'd never got to that point before where I felt like I just couldn't keep going. So it just wasn't like me at all. I was always someone that would push above and beyond because I had something to prove. I wasn't as talented as a lot of these guys, but I had to make up for it in my hustle. So when I had to take myself out of practice because I just could not cope, that was, that really hit me hard. The practice we had the following day was a similar story. I managed to complete the training, but I was just completely ruined afterwards. And I couldn't work out what was going on because we'd only had a week break. And even if you did nothing over that time, you just, you can't get that unfit. The second half of the season was a bit of a drag. I was going to the campus doctor trying to work out what was wrong with me, but she took blood tests and everything. She couldn't work it out. I was fine, apparently. At that point, I wasn't putting any extra time because I could barely make it through the regular practices. So the rest of that season, I just slowly struggled along and was just trying to hold on till the end, really. Which after the first year, this was such a polar situation. For the first time in my basketball career, I had doubts about what I could do. So the season wrapped up and then eventually the school year did. So I came back home for summer break. And during the summers, I'd play with my old team down at Warrandyte just to get some extra practice in and stay fit and stay sharp. Because I joined the season halfway through, there was only a couple of weeks to go. I remember one of the last games of the season, it was a Sunday morning, and 
I woke up and I felt sick, which wasn't super unusual at that point. But I didn't have any breakfast because I wasn't feeling great. Okay, so that's fine. And then I showed up to the game. So we're doing warm-ups. The game had started and that's when it happened. I just hit a wall. I was just so tired and fatigued. I couldn't do anything. I was so slow. Everything I did felt like it was a massive effort. And that's when I knew for sure that I just couldn't keep it up. And after that game, I didn't play again. It's been three and a half years since that game, and I haven't played since. And when I stopped, that was hard. For me, all I wanted to do was keep pushing and keep playing just because I enjoyed it so much. But then to step back all of a sudden like that, that was very hard to cope with. I spent the next couple of weeks before college just in my room playing Fortnite of all things, just to take my mind off and just to do something. Because I had all this extra time now that I wasn't training or playing or preparing. And that's when I knew that I was sick. There was something that was wrong with me. Never before had I thrown up during practice, but when that last year at college, I threw up multiple times. And that's not like me. It's not like I was working that hard that I should be throwing up. And even when I was back home, I was waking up a lot of mornings just feeling sick. But, you know, I didn't take, pay too much attention to it at the time. But looking back at it after I'd stopped playing, it was obvious that there was something wrong with me. And it went a lot deeper than just not being able to play basketball. That was literally my identity and who I was. I didn't know who I was anymore. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna go back to college. If I wasn't playing basketball, what was the point of going? There were so many questions that filled my head during those couple of weeks after I'd stopped. And yeah, I didn't know what was next. It was really a dark time for me. But I decided I was two years in, I only had two more years to go to finish my degree. I knew there was no way I could play basketball, so I was gonna to have to go and tell my coach. Because it was still unknown if I was actually gonna go with the season or not, I waited to the last minute to tell him. It was only when I got back to the US onto campus I made the call. I missed the first training session because I told the coach I wanted to have a meeting with him. So the next day I sat down with him and I just told him, I'm feeling sick the majority of days. I haven't been eating properly. I just don't have the capacity to play basketball anymore. And for some reason, I thought he wasn't gonna be able to take the news, but he was more than understanding. Even just looking at me, he could see that I'd lost so much weight and I was just skin and bone sitting there across from him. He even said to me, you don't look well. So that was the closure for me. After everything I'd worked for, after all the hours I'd put in, Ever since I started when I was eight years old, just done. We weren't gonna do that anymore. And what was also hard is I had to tell my friends as well. And they'd all known me as the basketball player who would go off to the gym and put up extra shots and just spend all his time over in the sports center practicing and training. And still at that point, I had no idea what was going on. But I was really lucky to have really great friends around me that were so supportive and Honestly, now that I wasn't playing basketball, I had more time to hang out with people, which was really quite nice. I was lucky in that I had a degree that I could focus on, so I could put more time and effort into schooling. But apart from that, I was still completely lost. I had no idea who I was. For that whole year, I was unsure what was going on with me. So I went through the list of what could it be. Would it be food? Well, no, it couldn't be food because I was having a whole bunch of different foods, trying different combinations. Well, what about stress or anxiety? Well, I've never really been a stressful person and it just didn't seem like that would be the cause. So I just didn't know. For that whole year, I was waiting to find out what was wrong with me. Finally, when I came back home and I started seeing some specialists, we worked it out. So after a year and a half, after first noticing that I wasn't feeling right, through all the times I was waking up feeling sick, to that final game I had that Sunday morning. It turns out that I do in fact have a food intolerance. And that was crazy to find that out. It was kind of good, but at the same time, it's like, what? I've always been able to eat whatever I want. Why is it only now that I start feeling sick? 
And we still don't know how it developed or if it was because of the stress or the food that I was eating in the US. And it was actually such a relief to find out. Even though I had to give up basketball and I had to go through that really tough year, very uncertain year of not knowing what was going on. It was a relief to find out because now I could at least make some steps to move forward. So that last and final year I had at college, I could sort of, now I could enjoy it a bit more. I sort of knew what I could and couldn't eat. I was still kind of working through that process a little bit, but I just felt so much better. And I could really spend the time with friends and hang out and just do everything that I wanted to do, which I couldn't do when I was playing basketball. I had all that extra time. So I went on the international camp. I learned to snowboard. I played volleyball. I went on all sorts of adventures because now I could. So I really made the most of my last year, but I guess things still just weren't the same because I'd had to, I get, basically gave up on my goal. I didn't make it as a professional basketball player. But I've been able to since discover that basketball wasn't the only thing I wanted to do in life. Video is something I discovered that I'm super passionate about and I've even started my own business since finding that out. And I probably would never have discovered it if I had still been playing basketball because that's where all my focus and attention was. So after three years, I've decided I'm gonna go back. Not to the US, but I'm gonna start playing basketball again. And I can't wait. I'm so excited to step onto the court again. And already after the training sessions that we've had with the new team, it just feels incredible to be back. It just brings me so much joy and I've since realized that my goal was never to play professionally like it was but it was more so that I just wanted to play all the time and the best part now is now I can do both things that I enjoy. I can do my work doing video and then I can also play basketball as well. So it just goes to show as you develop your goals do change and sometimes it does take a life-changing event to realize that. So don't feel the pressure to chase goals just because someone has told you. Find the goals that are right for you and go chase them. Thanks for hanging around, guys. I'll see you in the next video.